Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. Important stuff to talk about today for anybody, whether it's you or somebody you know, who is a caregiver. A lot of responsibility taking care of a loved one. Even more challenging when people give you their advice or critique you. How do you cope with that? How do you navigate through that? It can be hurtful. It can be challenging. Be great if you had that thick skin and you just let it bounce off you. Easier said than done. But lots of things we can learn here today from our caregiving coach. That's what she does. Gives advice to others. And she's back with us. Marika Humphreys is on the program. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing well. And getting sort of into the holiday spirit, which is crazy. Like, I, again, I know we talked about this last time, I think, but we're like in holiday season now, like full on. I feel yeah. like the weather has finally changed now. It's gotten colder and rainier here in Washington, which is so, yeah. But, you know, you're starting to see the Christmas stuff out and like, I'm like, holy cow, that's going to just, it's going to go by so quick. I know. I, I'm so not ready. Like I, I just saw, I, I passed my house yesterday full on lights and decorations and display. I mean, every, I'm like, oh, wow. What? Really? What? We didn't put wow. that. And, and you know, it was really fun. They repurposed a uh, Halloween decoration, like a 10 foot tall skeleton. And I think they took it from skeleton and by adding a scarf and a couple of things, turned it into, uh, I think it's uh, night, Nightmare Before Christmas or something. Oh they yeah. The characters yeah. there. So very yeah. crafty, very, very, but that is, it's it's Christmas. It's a holiday. It's not ready. <laughs> no. not ready. I did see a lot of those like ten foot tall skeletons. Those are like the new thing. They are so the new thing. Right. apparently they do need to be repurposed because mm. I think there's a ton of them out there all over the country now. Right. I mean, all the work it goes into putting them up, and yeah, I gotta yeah. I gotta assume that it's got to have you know s- stakes in the ground because you know it can move with the wind and everything like that. So yeah, get a I ladder. Know. Put a scarf on it. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, you know, even exactly. more so as we head into the holidays where you, you're probably going to be coping with more comments when it comes to caregiving. Yes. Um, where do you want to start with that today? Yes, that's a good point because the holidays is usually when we get together with the family members that we don't see all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as we know, our family members like to have opinions. Family members can be challenging. I just heard a great quote. Um, and I'm going to not say it exactly, but it was so funny. It, it basically, the quote was, um, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, that's mm. so true because they will challenge you. There's some, some member will challenge you. Oh, hands up. Um, by, by the way, side note here, let's all be honest. Let's really get it out there. Anybody that walks around saying, I have no problems with my family. Everything is fantastic. We always get along. There's never any issues. You're just not being truthful with anybody, including yourself. It's, always, <laughs> it's just impossible. There's always going to be something along the way, some more than others. Um, and it's going to be personality conflicts. There's going to be uh, things you got to navigate through, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so w- we talked a little bit uh, last time about uh, how it's easy to give caregivers you know, when we're, when we're supporting a caregiver, we want to often give them advice. And so this week, I wanted to talk about the the reverse of that, or not the reverse of that, but the other side of that. From the caregiver's perspective, you will get lots of opinions from people, from sometimes from friends, coworkers, family members. And sometimes those opinions are welcome. Sometimes they're not, but overall people will have opinions about your decisions. Maybe you and your loved one, you know, you might be a care partner and you're helping to make care decisions or a full on caregiver and you're making a lot of decisions on your own. So people are going to have opinions about that. Um, How much you're doing or how little you're doing. Like, the level to which you're doing whatever your you know responsibilities are or that you've taken on in caregiving, people are going to have opinions about that. Um, how you're doing it, people will have opinions about all the things, and that can be challenging. Like you said, sometimes it can be um, ha- make you you know it can be hard to just hear, or or and I, I was thinking about this. I think people tend to have two responses. 
either someone gives you an opinion that you didn't ask for in some form about something around your caregiving. And I think some people either um, they start to doubt themselves and kind of, you know, question their own decisions. Or on the other side, I think the other type of response that we tend to have is total rejection outright. Like, they don't know what I'm doing. They don't know what I'm facing. Screw them. They don't understand and kind of shutting down or sealing themselves off from, you know, that opinion. And I think both are, both have their downside. Um, In the first case, when you start to doubt yourself, I mean, the downside is doubting. Like as a caregiver, you have to find trust in yourself and have to be willing to trust that you know what's right and best. But at the same time, we also don't have all the answers or we can't see all the perspectives. And so when we reject other people's opinions outright and kind of shut them down or like at least shut them down in our mind, um, we also cut ourselves off from another perspective and potentially some more wisdom. So I think the ideal way is somewhere in between and being willing to listen and still know that you can make your own choice. Hmm. But that can be challenging. What do you do when somebody offers unsolicited advice? Is there some phrases that you can use um, tactfully to uh, accept the information and advice and then just move on? Yeah, I I think, um, you know, oh, that's a, that's a good point. I'll think about that. Like, that's a great one to, I, I think, always just acknowledging someone's opinion. And you can say, oh, let me think about that. Or you make a good point. And, and I think that's a great place to notice if you feel defensive at all. Um, because if you want to start arguing like, well, you don't, you just don't understand or something, that's usually a sign that there's probably something inside you that is either afraid they might be right or like quite, you know, potentially doubting your own self. And so you don't want to hear anybody kind of question your own decisions. So I think if you notice um, a real desire to feel, if you feel defensive, I think that's actually something to pay attention to. And it doesn't necessarily mean you say, you know, oh, you're so right or whatever. But I think it's, it's, a clue into, hey, maybe this is something I should think about a little more. Uh, because usually we get defensive when there's an element of truth to what someone has said that we think ourselves, right? And it's not so much what they say, but if we think there's any bit of truth to that, it's worth looking into that for yourself. Hmm. Yes, but I also feel too that you are doing all of this over here. And then this person just comes along and and throws a comment. Now, maybe there's a good suggestion in that and you can react to it, you know, accordingly, if you so choose. I never thought of that. Thank you. But if it's just a me, 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 basically one of those you're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, you do it. (laughs) Where are you? (laughs) You're, you know, you're visiting for the holidays. You're, you're coming from another state. I don't see you offering any help. This is inside yeah. my mind, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm the one receiving yeah. that. Um, I don't ask you for your advice either. Yes. Is there phrases that we can use just to say basically thank you? <laughs> with thank po- you, but no thank. You. Yeah, with a poker yeah. face on. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I think, um, yeah, I, I hear your point in the sense that it maybe is that's hard. it. Maybe that's as simple as it is. I hear. Your I hear point. your point. Yeah, I hear. Yeah, because you're not saying anything. Uh, Good or bad. Yeah. Just me. You were hurt. Yeah. I hear, I hear yeah. your point. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> if you want to shut it down, that is a great way, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I got to yeah. remember that. <laughs> and yeah. I think when you said it, you, you weren't even thinking about saying it, but you were saying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I, I do think, you know, there's a couple of different ways. Like you, the, the, the scenario to described are, I, I think we all know we have those maybe members, we're going to pick on the family a little bit since it's the holiday or coming up to the holidays. And so we definitely have those family members who will do that, right? Who will just sort of nitpick and come in and off their opinion. And it's not a genuine anything. It's just, you know, so I do think knowing that, I think that's a great strategy actually is to 
especially when you're going to some sort of family event where you think you might encounter other people's opinions that you're not really like, not necessarily interested in hearing, just to prep yourself for they're going to have opinions and, you know, have the ready phrase at hand, like, oh, good point. I'll think about that. Or thanks, mm, you know, and, yeah. and then walk away and I'm going to go, you know, get something well, to drink. You know, you just reminded um, me of, I hear your point. If you tweak it just a little bit, it sounds like you're agreeing with them, but you're technically not. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So it almost yeah. sounds like you're embracing it. Basically, you're saying, yeah. I heard your point. And yeah. Th- and thank you. <laughs> Yeah. And, and to, and to that point, right. Most people want acknowledgement, like in, in conversation, when we interact, and this is probably a larger problem we have in society right now is, is we're not really hearing the other side, you know, we're not really hearing each other. Mm. So when we, um, when we can all probably practice just acknowledging what someone says, you know, acknowledging the point. So that's what we're doing when we say, yeah. I hear your point or, oh, yeah, thanks for offering that. You know, yeah. you might be thinking I wasn't asking. I don't really want your opinion. But, you know, you can when we feel acknowledged, often that's enough for people like, mm. OK, people they just want to be heard. Yeah. People just want to be heard. Right. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Very challenging, yeah. though, because uh, you know, <laughs> people can say some mean things uh, or, or things that are just hurtful while you're doing the best you can to take yes. care of somebody. Yes. And and I think that's the deeper thing here is if you feel that defensiveness come up, I think really looking for your own self, right? And this has nothing to do with them anymore. Then it's about why does that bother me so much? I mean, sometimes it's just that member of the family that you maybe have a history of and that, you know, kind of always ruffles your feathers. But other times it's, we do have internal doubts. I think that's why often that's so triggering for Mm. people is because inside, and especially for caregivers, there is always doubt. Am I doing enough? Am I doing the right thing? You know, am I being too selfish or am I, you know, whatever, neglecting myself. I mean, there's always these questions. And so I think it is worthwhile to think, why does that bother me so much? Um, Mm. And because there's a deeper, there's a deeper message there if you're willing to, to find it. And, and so a combination of things, right. Kind of prepping yourself for the the relative that is going to push your buttons (laughs) in advance and know they're going to do that and have a kind of a go-to phrase, um, but, but also maybe just, you know, recognizing that, yeah, this brings up the doubts that I have about myself and that can be okay. We can still, we all have doubts about all sorts of things. Like none of us know at any one point how things are going to turn out and for doing the right thing, but we can trust and kind of check in or do we feel like we're making the right decisions? Right. Uh, yeah. It's a good point because it's, it, you know, it, it's. We want to think that they're annoying, but they may be a mirror. They may be giving yeah. you a view of something you're not seeing from where you are. Uh, so I guess de- depending on who it is, because some relatives are just. Yes, sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Consider the source, right? I think the that's source. the, yeah, I think that's the, and because there are a lot of people, I was just thinking about this recently um, where I did this and it was. I, where I was really afraid to, um, it, it was actually my dad to talk to my dad about a decision I'd made. And it wasn't around caregiving, but I was realizing that the reason I was afraid to bring it up is because, and he he's a type, <laughs> has a lot of opinions, but I also know he cares and he's smart and he often has very, you know, a good perspective, but sometimes he he will not shy away from giving you his opinion. Let's just say that, right? So it's a, it's somebody that whose opinion I value on. A, and on the other hand, sometimes I don't always want. And I thought about it. I'm like, why, why am I so reluctant to bring this up? And part of it was because I, I was doubting my own opinion. And I think we sometimes forget that we still get to choose, you know. So if you are the caregiver, yeah, you still get to, you're the one doing the, 
the work, right? You're the one showing up. It's still your choice. And so if you can be open to other people's perspectives, especially when they're hard to hear, you may learn something and it's a good chance to reflect and go, do I like my choices? You know, and reaffirm that for yourself or think out, oh, you know, I I don't feel great about this one thing. And that's that's the mirror that was just reflected to me. You know, sometimes we suppress those things or bury them down. And it's it's all just about, you know, it's an opportunity to kind of check back in with ourselves, but a reminder that I still get to choose. It's still me and I can trust myself, you know, but I also don't know everything and I don't, you know, I think checking in is good as well. When you start doubting yourself, how do you, how do you recover from that? I, uh, so I, I think liking your reasons, like what are, what are my reasons for, you know, why I do this or the way I'm doing things really like you can make a list. I'm doing it for these reasons or because Mm. of this. And then you got to sit back and say, do I like those reasons? Mm. I mean, sometimes that is, I love thinking about that because we don't often think about, we don't um, judge our reasons. And when we realize I'm just, I'm like, I'm not doing something. I didn't want to bring that topic up with my dad because I was afraid of his response. That's not a great reason that I feel proud about, right? Um, so we often don't do things or we're, we're pushed around by our emotions in a, in a way that's not helpful mm. out of fear, out of, um, you know, f- I'm also like, I don't love confrontation as well. So I will notice that that will impact my actions, fearing a confrontation when the best thing is I just need to have a difficult conversation. That might be what I need to do, but I don't want to do it because it could be uncomfortable. So that's the invitation to, um, I think, to regain Mm. trust in yourself is discover your reasons and ask yourself if you like them. And if you don't, that's then the, then you've got to go to work on maybe either changing your actions or figuring out, you know, what, how do we deal with what, what is pushing you around? So I'm an NAM men's group. I, I think I shared with you, I've been doing about six months now, very impactful. And one of the, one of the major things that's often said is keep your emotions out of it. Try to remove your emotions because it can cloud what's going on. And now, like, for example, if you make that list, you know, what this is what I'm doing. Why am I doing it? You know, kind of just make, make yeah. kind of keeping score, pros and cons, whatever it might be. Yeah. And, and well, that's another part of it. Seeing it in front of you gives yeah. you clarity, even journaling, yeah. whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, but trying to keep the emotions out of it may be impactful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think... Uh, the first step to that is recognizing where the emotions are showing up, mm. you know, what those are, because keeping it out of it, like it, that's hard to do. That's really hard to do. So we first have to be able to see, oh, okay. Like, again, my fear of confrontation is just a discomfort around, um, you know, having a difficult conversation mm. that I have to see that first in order to keep it from influencing me. But I think it's a great way to think about it. Like, what are the emotions here? Um, and then, you know, and then recognizing like, okay, that's an old, often a lot of the, the emotions we have that we're uh, afraid of or don't like are ones that we've probably struggled with our whole life. You know, they, we tend to, they tend to chase us around. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it as well is kind of separate the actions and then what are my emotions around it? And especially when that relative comes along and is just making that comment that you know, wasn't uh, solicited, it could be yes. mean spirited. You just to, to help you deflect or make it roll off you even better. Um, yes. Just like take the emotion yes. out of your response. Just, yes. Yeah, you know, it's a great yes. point. Thanks. Yes. That's it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and I think preparing in advance, especially around holiday gatherings, like that is the best way. Because in this, in the moment, we are often like, you will be annoyed or irritated or (laughs) frustrated or angry. You know, you will feel that. And if you can't, if you have something planned to say that it's going to make it so much easier. And then taking that half second beat to take a breath, pause, not just respond, like, you know, react, but then pull out your, (laughs) your ready-made response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, 
I often put it through the uh, three phase filter, and that's you know email, uh, especially text, all of that. Uh, even right now, I have a situation. I wrote a text out. I saved it as a draft. I'm going to get back to it. Give it 48 hours. But is it kind? Is it yes uh, important? Is it necessary? Yes. Yeah. Just the fact, are- think of it for a second in that term. So um, great. You know, is it kind? I love that. I love that. I'm going to write that down. I know you've shared that before, but I'm going to write it down. I pilot by it. I try to try to remember it, and I'm you know have to go back to that text I have. Uh, Yes, because it's a (laughs) uh, it's um, could be the ending of a relationship. So I want to carefully uh, position it and uh, take the emotion out of it. But there are reasons. Yes. Um, But I have to put it through that filter. You know, you you, know, no reason you can't be kind. Yes. And I, I think that's such a good point, especially with text these days, because mm-hmm. people fire off texts and yeah. they are, it can be emotion e- or a relationship ending. Yeah. It's Because it's so easy. It's a little, little, little press. Yes. You don't even give yes. it the thought. When you send an email, yes. maybe there's another measure of, let me just scan yes. through, typo, right. whatever it might be. Yeah. And then certainly on the fly, it's hard to do the, yep. you know, the three-phase filter when somebody walks in and says something <laughs> Yeah. Yes. But to your point, I think it's the best one ever. Take a second. Yeah. The, the pause is powerful in that it allows you to think for a moment. And even if they said something to you, don't reply right away. It makes them feel better. Like you listen to them and you're processing it as, a, as opposed to flying yes. off the handle. What you're really doing is you're processing. <laughs> like, taking a second, <laughs> taking a breath. Um, yes. And it feels like it's, a, it's, it's, uh, a year that that pause lasts and it can only be like three seconds and that's yeah. really fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-mm-mm. Yes. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to share that around as yeah, well. It's stuff I learned. I learned from you. Um, and even what we said before, it's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good point. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then walk away. And then just walk away <laughs> with that smile. Yeah. Walk uh, away. And we say thank you. Just thank him yeah. for it. You know, I appreciate it. Doesn't mean I'm going to do anything Thanks. about it. Doesn't mean I agree yeah. with you, but, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. how do we navigate this if somebody's going through some of these challenges or some of the other uh, challenges that come along with caregiving? How do we How do we find you? Uh, you can find me on my website, coachmarika.com. And uh, you can set up a consultation with me, find my podcast there as well. And uh, my story is on there as well, my own mm. caregiving story. Yeah. And thank you for reminding of us that because you, you went through a journey and there were ups and downs and you've yeah. ad- identified there some self-doubt yeah. at some times. And everything that we yeah. talk about here, you dealt yes. with it. Yes. You did. Yes, absolutely. And I see it in my, with my clients all the time as yeah. well. These yeah. are common caregiving challenges. Appreciate you and uh, appreciate you being here today. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. We'll catch up next time and we will be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by End Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.